Welcome to Scotland's new medical city. On the southern fringe of Edinburgh, a $2 billion project is underway to turn this site into one of the world's top 10 bioscience centres. We believe that uh, if we can assemble a cluster in comprising industry, the National Health Service, health provision in the hospital and the academic activity in the university, we will uh, achieve most quickly improvements in wealth and health. Already Scotland is home to 20% of the UK's life science companies, attracting more than $650 million annually in research funding. On this site there are currently over 70 companies working alongside Edinburgh scientists, including 17 of the world's top pharmaceutical firms. The aim now is to come up with more of their own. We're really smart at coming up with new concepts, new ideas. And it ought to be possible for us, many of us like myself, are clinically qualified and see patients uh, in between doing the research and teaching the students, we ought to be able to come up with a number of ideas that can be taken all the way through and into treatments for our patients. Professor Peter Gazal has done just that. As we move forward into the future, medicine takes, and the treatment, if you like, for disease, takes a rather linear growth over time. Our science is actually undergoing through an exponential growth. So our challenge really is how do we connect the two together? And of course, what that is all about is translating our basic science into um, real world products. And that is the business of business. Gazal has successfully achieved that with the creation of three companies, including ArrayJet, which uses inkjet printhead technology to print biological samples, such as DNA, onto glass slides. The company, which has a team of 15 engineers and scientists, has an annual turnover of around $1.5 million. Another entrepreneurial husband and wife team in the university is behind the creation of this product. It's a kit uh, which allows for the removal of dead cells and dying cells from cell cultures. And cell cultures are used all over the world for a wide variety of biomedical research purposes. The future for this little box looks encouraging. Potentially the lab market is worth about 50 million pounds, we think, worldwide. Our technology has um, applications further downstream in, in other markets such as um, regenerative medicine, therapeutic cells, therapeutic proteins and production of our own therapeutics, but those are larger markets uh, further downstream from where we're at now. But the creation of these new companies has brought its own challenges. The last two or three years we've started to generate the translational, the, the, the concepts that go from the bench to the bedside, the translational ideas that begin to spin out companies. And colleagues have got very enthusiastic about doing this and the first few companies have started. And then the big question is, where do you put them? Right now it's just a field, but by the start of 2012 this 10,000 square metre site will be a state-of-the-art laboratory and office complex home, it's hoped, to the next generation of cutting-edge life science companies. Entrepreneurs here at Edinburgh welcome the move. I think we might have hit the ground running faster sooner in that help with that kind of infrastructure would have been available from, from the point of view of practical things like space and access to facilities. But probably the, the biggest gap that we have that might have helped to fill is the... Um, the kind of commercial know-how. So if there were access to people who could give you common sense help and practical help on, on things that you've never encountered before commercially, I think that would, that would make a big difference. Help with funding too is critical. You're forever chasing the next investment because the investments tend to be small. So before you get profitable, you need to be able to get the money in to, 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 to have a chance of making something work and a lot of companies sink because they can't do that. There is plenty of money being pumped into this project. The new 96 million dollar Scottish Centre for Regenerative Medicine is the next flagship institution to be completed on site. Last year Scottish companies and organisations in this field made breakthroughs in synthetic blood and embryonic technology and began stem cell trials for corneal blindness and stroke. Life sciences is identified as one of the seven key sectors of our government's economic strategy. Life sciences contributes today over £3 billion sterling to the, UK, to the Scottish economy 
and employs over 32,500 people. So today it is delivering, and obviously as Scotland's main economic development agency, Scottish Enterprise, we are fully committed and supported to this project. Edinburgh University's biology and medical departments have been less successful in comparison to some others, like microelectronics, in forming and spinning out companies. But that could be about to change. Our medical school has a 300-year history and you can build up a lot of research momentum in 300 years. Momentum it is hoped that will propel Edinburgh's new bio quarter into the next century of excellence in its field.